Who does benefit from this war? And I know you've taken that question into your elected representative's offices. And that's what we should be doing, asking the elected representatives, who's calling you up and saying that they want you to prolong this war? And I've asked that of the most conservative Republicans and Democrats in the Chicago area. Chief of Staff will readily say, oh, we never get calls like that. I haven't heard a call like that for the last three years. Well, who is pressuring for benefits from this war? And I want to frame this by acknowledging that I think there are many, many good-hearted, kindly, earnest people who ask the question, along with elected representatives, but if we leave Iraq, I mean, we'll be leaving Iraqis to fend for themselves. Don't we have to stay in Iraq in order to take care of Iraqis and fix the mess? Now, I don't, I don't want to be a sour grapes person. I don't want to be shrill, but I have to confess to you that I sometimes want to scream, well, what about the 500,000 Iraqi children that nobody could learn about, nobody could care about? They never appeared in anybody's radar screen year after year after year when Iraq never appeared in anybody's newspaper. Why didn't we care then? It's almost as though there's this new attitude, no Iraqi child left behind. Well, we left behind plenty. Kathy Kelly vet what she's talking about. Under hela 90-talet upplevde hon på nära håll sanktionernas förödande konsekvenser för civilbefolkningen. Hon såg barnen dö i sjukhussängarna bara för att det saknades rena sprutor. Dö i cancer bara för att det saknades röntgenutrustning. Som grundare av Voices in the Wilderness samordnade hon ett femtiotal resor till Irak med akut distribution av läkemedel, sjukvårdsmaterial och leksaker till barnen i strid med sanktionerna för vilket hon dömdes till fängelse och böter hemma i USA efter att ha överlevt bombmattorna över Bagdad de första invasionsmånaderna. Cathy har tre år i rad nominerats till Nobels fredspris. I suppose it's very, very important that we, we keep in mind what we've done. Former Secretary of State James Baker said at the conclusion of the Iraq Study Group report that he'd framed and written much of, that we will not wring our hands over memories of mistakes that may or may not have been made in the past. We will not wring our hands over such memories. And I do feel a, a deep defiance. And I realize that one of the reasons that's kind of stuck with me is because I don't want to wring my hands. You don't want to wring your hands. We want to be able to do something to extend that hand of friendship to alleviate the suffering. But I think that at least one of the ways to stop a next war is to continue to tell the truth about this war. And that we can do. And so we have to be confronted by these very, very difficult truths. And I suppose one of the ones that was so difficult in the May 8th issue of the New York Times, you might have seen it, a report from Save the Children, which said that in the year 2005 alone in Iraq, 122,000 Iraqi children didn't reach their fifth birthdays. It didn't get better in 2006. It's no better this year in 2007. And so we're right back to where we were when so many of your good hearts were touched to try to end the economic sanctions that we knew had cost the lives of at least as many as 500,000 children under age five. We have to be confronted by the World Health Organization report in April of this year, which said that 70% of Iraqi families don't have access to potable water. And in 80% of the families, they can't separate their toilet water from their drinking water. 
And David and I get these desperate emails from our friend Amal, who says that they can't wash the children because that would be such a waste of what precious water they have. And there are 17 of them now living in what I remember is kind of a shed. And that the teenagers are starting to fight over food and the mouse says, my personality is coming apart. And that the married daughter with a new infant takes water and hides it. 